everybody. You're not even going to believe I caught, <laughs> I caught Blair. I can't even believe it. I'm, I'm like giddy, like a little kid. <laughs> hey guys. So, oh my God. Everyone's so excited that you're here. So I'm excited. So, yeah. Thank you, friend. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. So I've been doing these lives for about, I don't know, maybe a couple months to a year now. And on Wednesday, I call it my therapy session. So, you know, because we're all so sick and tired of the BS that's happening. And um, before we move forward, I just want to say this about Blair, everybody. And Blair has become a very good friend of mine. And it, I, I would not be doing this if it wasn't for Blair. And Blair has been in the forefront of creating a space for a lot of us to start speaking out. And I think that you have built in an, in an in space for us to feel not only safe, Blair, but to be able to express how we feel in a, in a way that is not being angry or mean or disconnected like the other people are. So I first want to say that about you. Oh, thank you, Bug. I, I am so, first of all, proud of you. And I love that you are so full force on YouTube right now, because I remember a while into you speaking out, YouTube wasn't necessarily your thing. Uh, you weren't doing it really full time. And so yeah. I remember doing so many collabs with you and we would get these amazing videos done together that would get like a million plus views. And I'm like, I wish you had a YouTube channel that I could funnel some people to. So I'm so happy you're doing it full time. And uh, I'm just amazed that you're here and I am so happy to be here. I feel like we haven't Aww. done a collab in a minute. So this is amazing. Well, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, I, I didn't want to get involved in this sort of bitchiness of it all i mean you're you are not that you're bitchy ever your reaction oh, is are, okay <laughs> but the way you did it was so classic and so great and so straightforward and you know i just i just being an older trans person and sort of like the, the oldest tranny on the block yeah I just thought it was kids you know what i just thought oh it's just kids doing this stuff but when i started watching you you really enlightened me about what is really going on you know behind the scenes and i i i do, I'm going to keep saying it to you and to the world out there. If it wasn't for you highlighting what is happening early on, I don't think we would be able to be doing what we're doing today. Seriously. Thank you. I mean, this was ultimately the goal. You know, I don't think that it's anything necessarily so special about me that I was the first to kind of do it. And the entire mm -hmm. time it was just like, let me do this so that other people can do it too. So right, the fact right. that it's now, you know, happening and with you leading the way as well, it's like amazing. Cause also your voice of a different generation is in many ways, much more valuable than mine. You know, I can speak to, you know, what I've seen in my generation with the trans community and the evolution of, you know, the LGBT yeah. community and wokeness and all that. But without that really seasoned perspective and the history involved, it only goes so far. So I mean, I think personally, us together, uh, the most dynamic duo ever. And I can see why they've never casted us together on a thing like a Jubilee, because it would just be a bloodbath, but, you know. Well, you know, I, I know that the Jubilee thing you did, you had told me that you told them. And, you know, I've done a couple, maybe five actual Jubilees. And so yeah. for sure, they would have never let me on that panel because it would have just, we would have just, just, even though you and the rest of you, your panel destroyed those people. And my God, that Blossom, what is that? <laughs> I mean, listen, she, now that it's been a few months, I guess this is good that we kind of give an update on this. Now that it's been a few months since that um, sort of Royal Rumble, wow. um, I have a bit of a different perspective on Blossom and even the mm. other two that were really spearheading the like, you know, I hate using the word because I'm a grown adult, but they were being bullies, right? Um, I, I feel like I see so much pain in them and I feel yeah, so yeah. much um, empathy that I couldn't in the moment as I was defending myself feel because I was obviously in a combative state. And now, you know, I hope that, cause I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of a lot of hate at once and to feel like no one's seeing my perspective. So for them, I mean, their behavior was, you know, there was no defending it and there still isn't, but yeah, I do yeah. hope that they've healed from the internet sort of, you know, siding against them and that they see some ways they went wrong. Yeah. Um, and because I can see some ways I went wrong, you know, I feel like even though some people tell me that I held my composure very well, I feel like at times I lost it a little bit and going forward, I would like to be a little more, you know, well, you know, first off, 
I, I will say you are, that's, I'm telling you right now, that's how amazing you are. You, you're, you literally could be a complete jerk and just be bleh, they're gross and they're disgusting, but you did it. You actually sat here and said, I understand, you know, people are hurt. They're dealing with that. They're angry. And that just is what I want the world to see about you. But the things people say about you are not true in any way, shape or form. You're here because you care. You think Blair would do all the stuff she's doing if she didn't care is because she cares. And so I think it says a lot about you that because it was ugly that that panel yeah. was ugly and nasty and it was they, they really were I, I'll be the guy who says it you know they and I always try to take the high road too by the way I think I think you probably know that but that yeah. being said I don't pr appreciate the way that they not not only disrespected you but misrepresented you on on some level and that's not fair because you know I could see how that panel was so on some level jubilees they did they sided with the more left-leaning people and i could see it in the edits i could see it in the whole thing because i've been on that set and also i know about editing as we both do right and you can literally misconstrue the whole situation there but but that being said you 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 all i think you i don't know is it winning <laughs> the debate uh, is it i think you out you outsmarted them and and you came to the table with facts where they came to the table with i think more of a feeling yeah i think ultimately i mean just the fact alone that there is a youtube video with millions of views that has the word trans conservatives in it i think just opening you know this new dialogue that includes the idea that you know there are different perspectives within our community that's so brand new you know prior to that i mean it was just our individual YouTube channels. You'd have to go on to understand that there's varied perspectives. And now it's part of the actual public ether that like, okay, not all of them are these extreme leftists. And yeah. I think that that is ultimately the win for all of us, not necessarily the people involved, you know? Yes, most definitely. And that's the thing. All of a sudden now, if you're if you're saying something against anything, you're right. I get called right wing. Now, now Blair, probably, you lean more towards the right. I lean a little. I'm a more liberal kind of person. Look at how we literally were family. Yeah. Blair and I are actual family. Mm -hmm. And but we have different political opinions, which is completely OK and actually makes, I think, our relationship stronger on yes. some level because mm -hmm. I can hear things that I might disagree with. But at the same time, you you can change my mind. I'm always open to changing my mind, which I do. I've seen you grow, Blair, on so many levels. And that's what I want the world to see. People are allowed to grow. They're allowed to make mistakes. They're allowed to change their mind about things. And I, I have seen that in you on, on so many levels. Thank you. I, I feel like, you know, I've been doing this for like eight years now almost. And that's like just so long. <laughs> like it's, I can't believe, you know, when I started this, I was like, maybe this will be like a little side hobby. Maybe it'll be a thing. And yeah. now it's been my whole life for a decade. So, yeah. you know, 23 to 30 is kind of like a huge change for anyone. So it's been a long right. road, but ultimately, you know, I'm very happy with, with everything that's happened. So and I'm well, happy that I've met amazing friends like like you and I would have never had our, you know, never and so many other lovely people across the planet, you know, so That's it's right. all been awesome. Well, I mean, again, it's your career on some level. You're building your career and to build a career takes a lot of work. You built your brand, you built, which I, same with me, I'm a you know brand of building. It takes a lot of work. People don't understand the amount of work it takes to first off, build a channel like yours. Secondly, to just build your presence in the world against all the insanity that has come against you and you just kept going even though people were thrown you know it hurts i don't care what anybody says out there it hurts when your so-called community says things about you because i get it just like blair does and it it does hurt you on some level but you have to learn to sort of navigate through that hate which which you did in, in order to get to be the person you are today yeah and thank you for that and also i think it's just about understanding that this is a community if we're talking about the trans world yeah. you know that is very much in pain you know and it's it's people get you know a little bit sort of weathered with hearing the same narratives about why we have our pain oh discrimination oh that you know that's one thing but also just you know look at how lost you must be to come upon some of the really wacky ideas these people come across you know that is them attempting to fill a void with you know the nearest you know 
sort of glimpse of warmth they can find, like just any human warmth. And they find it in these ideologues that lead them astray and they become sort of shells of who they used to be. Mm-hmm. But ultimately that's born out of pain. And that gives me a yeah, lot more yeah. empathy for people. And it's not to say that some people don't deserve to get, you know, put in their place rather harshly if they're doing harm in the world. You know, yeah, if you're yeah. hurting kids, you might get told about yourself on where it's you to. But uh, I do understand that ultimately, you know, aside from a few types of behaviors and people that are irredeemable, yeah, yeah. most people are redeemable, I guess. Oh, uh, no, no, you make a total sense because again, today, remember, I transitioned a billion years ago. I've been doing this trans thing forever. And uh, what I see to me in my own old tranny eyes is scary to me because we never did this with children. We never, I mean, I think you could probably say the same when you started to transition because I never, we never wanted kids in this. We always discouraged that. We always said, let kids grow up. They can figure it out. We always knew this was an adult space. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, kids are being told they're trans and you know, I I will say to you, Blair, that you're the one who enlightened me about the kid thing. And that's when I was like, oh, what? And I started, that's when I started to listen to you on my dog walks. And I would just be like, people be looking at me because I'd be like, what? (laughs) Can I say one thing about your dog walks? No one understands how iconic you and your dog walking is because there was an incident where Lady Gaga's dog walker yeah. got shot right and you yeah. were the only witness and you were on the la news totally it was crazy. i remember seeing a clip during the, the lady gaga la dog walker shooting incident and buck is just there like oh yeah i saw it and i was running over there i was like wait what's going on? crazy i mean right only in la right in front of my house it was so insane and like yeah. i had massive so me being the guy i am right me being the the guy i'm like oh wow look at all this free pr but the but the flip side of that was it was sad because the dude did get shot and he did get hurt and he almost died and thank god my neighbor was there also and was just you know yeah. compressing that and it was a really insane thing but that's so la's a completely so glad you moved it is insane here How's Austin? I love it. Moving to Texas was definitely the best decision for me. Um, You know, sometimes I miss LA. It was just a little more active, but but the the lowered anxiety and the sort of, you know, just nicer people has been overall a huge benefit to me. So I love it here. Yeah, that's so great. It's good good for you for doing that. I mean, you know, LA has potential, but I think right now we're in just a mess of a, and also we become this weird, this weird thing called a sanctuary state. Did you know that? Oh, for many things, but you know, for the trans kids, right? Yeah. You can move from, did Texas ban children transition? They have implemented a lot of restrictions. Um, right. So you can't get surgery under 18. Uh, yeah. The hormones, I believe, are either there or getting there. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, you know, I support that. It's so funny. It's like I've spent my whole career speaking against children transitioning. And then when yeah. laws finally start to get implemented, I start seeing messages like, are you happy with what you've done? I'm like, yeah, I fought for a thing and it happened. That's a success. But, uh, right. you know, it is crazy that you can just take your kid over a couple borders and no, you can. So, so, so the problem I have with that Blair is that not only that, so, so I, as you know, I am a dad and I, I'm an, I'm an adopt, I adopted my kid for, for, and his dad is still in our life. But that being said, we, you know, when parents separate, sometimes there's really bad things that happen when that separation, luckily we didn't do that. We're, we're all solid family. That being said, now when you can transition your kid and one of the parents wants to transition the kid, but the other parent doesn't want to do it. You can literally grab, your child and run to California and be safe here, that is the most, not only to transition, but to take the child away from the other parent and for a state to let that happen. I'm just in awe and shock of of that that would be a a, a law. I think it's disgusting. And I think that people really live in this, you know, Disney movie where like a divorce happens and then, you know, the yeah. parent who supports the trans kid is is the good guy and the villain is the parent who's saying, can we wait or can we not do it at all? Yeah. And people do forget, like just like you said, how messy divorces can get and yeah. egos yeah. get involved and parents make decisions not necessarily to support the child, but to hurt the other you know, spouse. And sometimes the parents don't even know it because they're so caught That's up right. in the emotions of, I can't believe this partner that I thought I had 
is now not my partner and you know they're heartbroken and you can make crazy decisions when you're heartbroken that's why people say you know never make a decision right after like a divorce a death Mm -hmm. or whatever um and it's you know it's really i've always been against children transitioning i think based on sort of like basic logic that i've had and that's not to sound condescending but as of recently i've become even more against it for reasons that i didn't even really think about before you know in my own journey to understand sort of why i'm trans right and it's like i feel like i spent years understanding that i am trans understanding how to deal with it and then finally i'm at you know a decade in my transition where i'm like okay So I feel like I handled it pretty well and I feel like I figured it out relatively quickly, but why did it happen? Like, why am I trans? And uh, for me, you know, I've been very open in a recent video on my main channel about how it is my belief about my own life. And this is not a statement about anyone else's, but my own, that, you know, my childhood trauma played a significant role in it. Uh, It may not be the full explanation, but it's a significant role. And knowing that, you know, that's been on the books for many, many decades as far as psychology, that one of the side effects of um, childhood trauma can be wanting to be the other gender. That's been on the books forever. So understanding that that's just information that has been so repressed and that I didn't even come to think of it because of how repressed it was. I'm like, okay, so if even 10%, let's lowball it, 10% of these kids that are getting transitioned, surgically, medically, whatever, are doing it as a result of trauma, they're not doing it, There's that's not informed consent. Even if they were 18, that's not informed consent. Right. You know, and for me, I by no means wanna paint the picture that I'm suddenly now, you know, questioning me being Blair, questioning my transition, I'm very happy with it. And in fact, I'm actually more secure in it now knowing that I did this really elaborate thing to survive, but I effing survived that trauma. Um, and I'm more secure with being Blair now, but yeah. these kids, there's just no way to know this would be the right decision for them if some sort of childhood abuse or trauma was a part of it. No, my God, thank you. So that is so, so we're going to talk a little bit about your recent video on your therapy thing. Cause I'm huge. Like it, I'm a big believer of mental health and this is the disconnect that we have and why I believe a lot of these kids are not trans. How do they, how could they even know they're even near if they're not even delving into any of the stuff that's going on deep down inside. We just literally took out therapy. That says to me that there is some form of indoctrination happening because as far as I not remember, I'm an old tranny. I know a lot back in the day, we had to go to massive therapy. We had to work it out. We had to see whether or not this is this way or this way. Or if you had trauma, we actually did. I did go to therapy to find out about my trauma. What's going wow. on? Why is it that you want to be a dude? Why? When, what does it mean to be a dude? They would wow. question. I mean, I got questioned for two years. What, what does it mean you want to be a man? What and a I great didn't. question. And I didn't. And look what see? that became. It That made it so that my generation now it was a roll of the dice and i lucked out i rolled the whatever means that i'm happy with it at the end it's an even bigger roll of the dice for these kids because at least i decided as an adult as a young adult these kids i mean it's just it's nonsensical and it's going to be looked back on Uh. as one of the greatest injustices of you know the medical community and just of society you know the fact that it's become one of the main cultural footballs is really scary because it's yeah. children's lives at stake. And uh, knowing knowing now more a lot more about mental health, I feel like the mm-hmm. last year has been me really delving into that within myself, mm-hmm. knowing what it's like to be sort of feeling imprisoned by things going on in your head that you don't quite understand, yeah. that's scary. And so the idea that you can lock a child into that if you make a decision so early for them I mean, that's about the most dystopian, crazy thing ever. Well, I mean, I laugh so I don't cry because you know what's going to happen. Honestly, when you just try to pretend like nothing happened, we all know that with trauma. When you try to pretend that trauma didn't happen and you put it in the back, which is what most people do with trauma, instead of trying to bring it to the forefront and understand, you know, if we're we're looking at it now, we're understanding a lot lot of these young people have trauma. And a lot of the detransitioners are talking about the fact that they have SA trauma and no one ever, ever even touched on that. And so- that being said, why do you think, uh, in my observation, Blair, why do you think 
there are more young girls transitioning than young boys. Well, as you were sort of saying that just now, it made me think of the fact that, you know, the, the link between trauma and transition, at least for some mm -hmm. trans people, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm very big on that because I think it's such a complex thing that yeah. I don't think it's the case for everyone. However, yeah. and we know that with other things, we know that some people do it for a fetish, we know that some people do it for whatever, you know, so obviously there's varied reasons, but think about the explosion happened in, you know, people, especially young girls identifying as trans around COVID, during COVID, right after COVID. Uh, and think about the collective trauma we all went through, right. you know, because of not just the pandemic, but because of the way the world reacted to it. It was a very yeah. terrifying time. And I think that, you know, we're already seeing the effects of that trauma in other areas, like the mm -hmm. fact that you know, there are a lot of, you know, really scary things coming out the school about how uh, out of schools about how like eighth graders don't know their basic shapes, like triangles and squares, <laughs> terrifying. So you can see the trauma do other things. It's like, why wouldn't there be a link between why so many people started, you know, again, filling that void with something? What is it? What is it? Is it trans? Okay, trans. Yeah, it means I'm a boy. That's why I'm, you know, miserable right now. That's why I don't know what's going on with me. Um, when it comes to why there are more girls, yeah. I think that on on its face, you know, the female brain just has a higher emotional IQ. That is just mm -hmm. everyone knows this. And I like to say higher emotional IQ because I don't like sometimes when people say women are more emotional. It's like, well, that's one way to say it. But I feel like it's a higher emotional IQ, you know, and that's just okay. a form of intelligence that I feel like men sometimes struggle to pick up with, you know. <laughs> Um, or, or catch up too, sorry. And uh, I think that leads them to becoming more vulnerable, you know, just yeah. the fact that they can watch maybe another person on their TikTok, you know, crying tears of joy over a realization that they're trans and maybe that person really mm -hmm. was, but that, that connects with a young girl who's watching. Mm -hmm. And maybe that leads her to think that that's the reason why she's miserable. I think that it's not to say that females in general are more gullible but they are more vulnerable to psychological manipulation, emotional manipulation. And that's why they're to be more protected, not less protected. Um, so I think that's a big part of it. And also young girls and women in general deal with more body issues, you know? So, and we just can't deny that there is an overlap with, you know, gender dysphoria and body issues. They're, they're different, but there's overlaps. Um, you know, I've always had body issues my whole life i still do now as a you know trans woman in the public eye now i'm mm -hmm. have other you know aesthetic body issues but females in general are just more vulnerable to that type of thing and uh yeah. as far as you know why that's so crazy and like damaging is because they're also more more vulnerable to the types of treatments and surgeries and you know drugs that they take taking testosterone in a female body is just a more drastic thing than testosterone in, uh, sorry, than estrogen in, in a male body. Mm -hmm. And the surgeries are just more permanent, you know, it's like I could go back to flat chested if I really wanted to a, a, a young girl, you know, she's not getting her breasts back. So mm -hmm. it's just higher stakes for women in general. Well, wow, you just made some amazing points that even I hadn't thought about, which one of the things is that the surgeries are more drastic, yeah. which if you notice, and somebody who really fought to get top surgery, well, you know, double mastectomy, top surgery into a space of covered by insurance, because when I did it, everything I did was out of pocket, including hormones, including surgery, including therapy, all of it came out of pocket. That, and I don't want anybody to say, oh, Buck, no, it's not that. What I'm trying to say here is that I and we fought to get this into a place where you could use insurance so you can move forward and get your stuff done and then just get on with life. But now it's being abused. Now yeah. the insurance space is being abused by young people getting top surgery who are non-binary. And recently I just did a little kind of reaction to this young girl who cut her breasts off and didn't put the nipples back on. And I am mortified. I Honestly, I am, Belair. I'm mortified. That is not trans. That is body modification. It's also something's going on with this young person that they literally don't want to even have nipples. What? That reads as that reads as trauma to me, you know. That that reads more as body mutilation, and I think that people are quick to use the term 
body mutilation when it comes to trans surgeries. And right. in some instances, I think it's warranted, but sometimes I think it's overdone. But if you are literally taking your body out of a space of even being yeah. human, yeah. that's that to me is true body mutilation, no matter what side of the fence you're on. And, yeah. you know, it's just so sad because you just need time to figure this stuff out. That's why this fight to fast track things. And I mean, you had no idea that getting things, you know, onto insurance would be ran by people that were, you know, thank you doing all this, you know? So it's like, how would you even know that? I mean, it, the idea it's so irrecognizable. It's so non-recognizable from even when I started mm -hmm. that, like, I probably would have been on board to have it covered by insurance back in 2014 when I started. So yeah, it's, it's just insane. And, you know, I think that more people are coming around lately and understanding how insane it is, totally. but the damage continues. So that means that, you know, our fight isn't done. And it's not that this is the only thing I, you know, care about. I talk about a lot of things, mm -hmm. but this is really up there on the list of things that are like, this is one of my, I believe purposes on this planet is to, you know, speak truth on this and sort of just open dialogue about it. I've really realized that recently, like, I feel like my purpose is just to open dialogue. Like, it's not right, about right. what I say, even it's about opening dialogue. Like, you know, there was, you know, the reception to my therapy video and talking about trauma and, and trans and how they're related has been overwhelmingly positive. But, you know, there I've seen, you know, I haven't clicked on it because I'm not reading the comments, but certain Reddit threads that are like, you know, mad that I'm talking about it in this way. And I'm like, but you know what? That's my purpose. If people weren't talking about it before, now you are. That's you right. know, and you can make of it what you want. You can be mad about it. You can relate to it. You can hate it. It's some of our stories and the idea that some of our stories shouldn't be told because of someone else's ego, because of someone else's agenda. No, we're going to talk about it all. And that's Thank what you. I believe people like you and me and Marcus and Sarah Higdon and, you know, even the non-trans LGBT, you know, free thinkers like Ariel Scarcella, a lot of the gay um, YouTubers, Brad Palumbo. That's why we're all here. That's right. That's right. Thank you. And also, so I want to talk a little bit about the therapy session. It's so amazingly vulnerable. It takes a lot of guts to do what you did. And I think every anyone who said anything negative, they're clowns. We all know that. Everyone in this room, everyone watching knows that. No, no one should ever say that about what you did. You can't. You can't justify any hate towards what you did because yeah. what you did was so profound on so many levels. I've been telling people, you've got to go to therapy before you can even think about transitioning what it's literally backwards <laughs> you're transitioning and then going to therapy like then you're going to discover things about yourself that you maybe shouldn't have ever transitioned right not saying about you specifically but my point being is what you did is so profound because that is what we need to show the world these kids need therapy you found so you found out things about yourself that you basically didn't understand is that is that what happened so what happened to me um, and I'm glad I can explain this in a little more detail because I feel like, you know, I was talking in that video to, you know, a therapist who, you know, he has a really deep, you know, understanding and education on this. So certain things I didn't spell out so clearly because I knew he understood yeah. it. Um, so I, shortly before hitting 30 years old, had an influx of repressed memories start to resurface. And that sounds really crazy to someone who hasn't experienced that. And if I hadn't experienced, I'd be like, what do you mean? So you remember things that you didn't remember before, but that's exactly what it is. What happens when you are a child and you go through certain traumas, your brain, you know, because you're a child doesn't understand how to make sense of it. Your brain says there's no solution to the danger you're in. You know, you're in fight or flight when you're maybe being harmed or certain things are happening to you or around you and your body wants to find a solution. Do I run? Do I fight? Do I hide? And because there's no easy solution to certain things that are happening to you, your body's like, we're just going to forget this happened. You're, we're just going to forget it. Um, and that's what happened to me until about 29. And, you know, luckily I live such a blessed life now where I am safe in so many ways that my body finally felt safe enough to be like, this is data we can actually handle now. And so right. it started coming back and I mean, it led to a really big sort of, um, you know, dark night of the soul. Let's just say that where I really had to, for about six to nine months, I really 
became introverted. You know, I wasn't talking to anyone. I wasn't, you know, keeping up with family. I was isolating because I was trying to make sense of like, how could these horrific things happen to me at the hands of people that I trusted and loved and I just not remember it. So I had to really educate myself on repressed memories and understand that that's something that's actually so common that people around my age specifically will suddenly <laughs> remember things. And I'm like, right. wow. Um, so it, it led to a bit of an unraveling mental health wise where I had to really assess, well, then what the hell is going on? Like my life story has now changed at 30. And what does this mean in terms of me being trans? And in terms of everything else too, but trans being one of them. And uh, I realized there's no way there's not a link. There's just no way, you know, and I'm not ashamed of that. I don't think it makes me less trans. I don't think it makes my gender dysphoria, you know, less valid. I think that it makes it more valid because it explains it. I didn't just pop out the womb with it. I didn't just have it suddenly appear. It was formed and caused by something I really went through. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's been a big reckoning within my family because it's hurtful for, you know, my family to hear certain things about the reality of what was going on, but they've all been overwhelmingly, you know, great about it in the end. And uh, for me, I'm just so thankful it happened because I understand now. I don't have to log on and talk about this topic anymore with, you know, blind spots anymore. I know exactly why I'm trans. I did not feel safe as a boy. Wow. I did not feel safe as a male because when I was young and certain things were happening to me, I associated those things with me being, you know, more at yeah. more vulnerable because of the maleness. And it's a lot more complicated what happened to me than what people might be, you know, thinking. Um it probably involves certain things that people are going to, you know, into it but it's also more that i think added to it uh and i'm sorry i'm a little vague it's just certain things are going to take a lot of time to come to terms yeah. with talking about publicly super explicitly but i feel more whole now you know it left a hole in me remembering it but now i feel whole because i'm like all the pieces are there and i can go forward wow. with my entire head attached not wow. just pieces I mean, wow, Blair, it's so incredibly powerful that you are sharing this with the world, no matter, I can see, I, I do see the hurt, I do, and it, actually I get teary-eyed, you know me, I'm a big crybaby, <laughs> but I, I do get teary-eyed because I care a lot about you, and I care that this is told about us as trans people. There is a connection to uh, to trauma, to stuff, and trans people. It is an actual real thing. And I don't understand why we can't talk about that and why that is not something we need to talk about it because this is the link. There's a link there that has to do with that. And that's why when they say a baby is trans, I'm like, are you out of your mind? That trans is literally a disorder of something. We're, we're figuring it out now, but it is actually not normal. It is not in any way, shape or form at the height that it is, it has always been a very, very, very small disorder in this world, and it always will be. So I think what's happening is that's why they're not doing mental health care with these kids, and they're bypassing the mental health care. You're proving it to me, because if you bypass the mental health care, then you could just say all these kids are trans, because trans people know who they are. Right. <laughs> you clearly just said trans people actually don't know who they are. That's and I was really 30, learning about who I am. There so how does three equal trans? Because that's the age that they are really giving this trans identity to kids. And it's just so scary. And, wow. you know, I think that I, I guess if I, you know, it would be a bit disingenuous for me to pretend like I don't understand why people don't want these conversations to have, because right. there's a large stigma, you know, that, you know, victims of certain things feel Yes. which is unjust because you didn't do it to yourself. You weren't the cause of it when, if you're a child, of course, or if you're an adult and certain things happen to you, but you know, I think that, that plays into it. You know, there was a long time where I thought I would never, and I'm still not even fully talking about what happened to me, but I thought I would never even get to this point. The idea of doing a therapy session on camera where I'm talking about being harmed as a child or something. I mean, there was just no way in my head when I remembered one of the first conversations I had after 
talking a bit with Joey about it was like, but you know, I'll never talk about it with like my fans or anything. Like I'll never make yeah. that part of my public narrative. And he was like, oh yeah, you totally shouldn't. Because, yeah, yeah, I, you know, in, their, in his mind too, he wanted to protect me as well. And I was like, you know, when I got the call from David Sutcliffe to do that, I was like, this is a sign. This, this is, you know, and I was actually looking for, you know, trauma therapists when he hit me up, which is so crazy. And I was like, this is a sign that it's time for me to just open the conversation, even if I'm not ready. And I wasn't ready. You know, I, I fell into a little bit of a mental health pit when it got uploaded because I was like, oh, my God, it's out. Oh, my God, it's out. <laughs> but now, so glad it's out, you know, it because at the end of the day, if it helps one person. Oh, you know, God. You're, you just already changed the narrative. You just already just exploded so much. And I, th I think people who on some level maybe disliked you or whatever, right? Because that's just how people are on the internet now. Oh, Blair, you know, but they're just like that. They don't do any due diligence or even in see who you actually really are. I think mm -hmm. you flipped them. I really do. I, I see conversation out there that how, how they really respect you for doing that. So, oh, yeah. so on some level, it really did put you into another space where people who might not have looked at you as somebody who is actually very intelligent and has something to say on that level is saying, wow, we really need to look into therapy. Look at me at 30. I'm dealing with this. And you transitioned 10 years ago. Is that how long ago? Yeah. That's a long time of transition. You know that. Yeah. And it, it is. And, and to figure it out kind of fully now 10 years in is like that just shows me even more and makes me more even concrete in my belief that that's right it's not for kids it's <laughs> not for kids i mean wow. it was another you know i feel like with my trans identity i've really i've survived a few rolls of the dice you know mm. the first one was that it would be right for me at all the yeah. second one is that you know i would be secure in it once i found this out like I, this could totally, I could see this happening, this exact same thing happening to another trans person and then being like, oh, it's detransition time because this was the results of that. And I feel yeah. the exact opposite, but that's a roll of the dice. So the fact that I, I'm surviving two rolls of the dice as a success story, it's kind of like not, not, not everyone's going to survive even one of those rolls. So... Well, what it says to me was, is that you really care about yourself. You want to know why you're trans. You want to know what led you to this space. Isn't yeah. that what every person should know about? Why do I feel this way? Don't you want to know? So we're, so we're doing a disservice to young people by saying, oh, you don't need to know. You're just trans. That's what they're saying to them. You don't need to know why you are trans, or you don't need to know why you think this way, or you don't need to know. Let's just stare them over here. That's why I believe that we're using young people on some level these adults in the room are using young people for experiments to to justify their own need to transition whatever that means right there's a justification used when we say oh look children are trans then that can justify all the nonsense that's going on in the trans community today yes and, and in my mind the only solution and Y'all know I'm big on solutions. If you're my fan, you know, I like to bring it home. Like, I don't like to just talk. The only solution in my head that I can come to you right now to fix where we're at with trans healthcare is returning it to where it was when Buck was transitioning therapy. And if it takes two years, that's right. make it two years. Because in the grand scheme of your life, what is two years? If I would have transitioned between, I, I did it 20. If I started at 22, would that have been a huge difference in the grand scheme of my life? No. And, you know, we need to stop this lie that if you have to wait to maybe figure yourself out that you're going to off yourself or whatever, that's, 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 that's emotional blackmail. That's manipulation. That's, you know, I'm also big on, you know, don't let people write your story. When people tell you about, you know, well, this is what happens when you wait, you might kill yourself. It's like, what are you talking about? Don't put that on me. I don't receive that. It's back to you. How dare you write that? Because we are all unique individuals and we all owe it to ourselves to understand ourselves, you know? And I think that there's a big emphasis sometimes on, you know, maybe not taking the time out for self-love or self-care or like understanding your own mental health because it feels narcissistic or it feels self-centered and some of us have lives where we don't have the time or luxury to do that mm -hmm. but however you can to just fit it in the day trans or not you know like mm -hmm. i like i also discovered i you know 
my, in my late twenties that I have, you know, some minor ADHD issues, like, and it hasn't been a huge problem for me. I'm learning to cope with it, whatever, but it explains a lot in my life. And it's just by taking the time to understand, like, why do I have difficulties focusing? Is this normal or is this something that maybe is part of something else? Right. Um, so just, just taking the time to know yourself. And that's the thing kids don't do because they haven't been alive for enough years to do it. You know, I have an 11 year old. Hello. You think that if that 11 year old came home and said, I'm trans, I'd be like, no, you're not. I would literally yeah. say it to his face. No, you are not. What is happening? Why? You know, I explained why I think kids are. But that being said, the thing that's upsetting to me, Blair, is that we have now become a community based on lies. And we have become a community that is lying to the world about what it means to be trans, why people should trans, that trans women are women, that trans men are men, that women can now breastfeed. I mean, trans women can breastfeed. What? That's that the one that I'm OK. So the way I work is. So I obviously, you know, talk about trans stories for a living, have for a long time. Sometimes when I see one, I literally need like a week to process it. Like sometimes I'm late to even talk about it and stuff because I saw that yesterday. Joey brought his phone to me. He was like, look at this. What the, look what they're doing now. And I saw it and I literally did this. Yeah. Put it away. I'll come to it later. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, the boys yeah. and girls in the Blair White Army will hear my opinion about it, but not right now because that's a lot. Oh. And so, I mean, that's disgusting. I mean, that's just wow that's just part of the overall psyop right like that even transcends yes. trans no pun intended that's like <laughs> no we want you sick we want you unhealthy we want to tell you that this is healthy when it's not we want to tell you this is unhealthy when it's not okay. everything is so backwards because a sick people is an oppressed people there you go and you know bam if you're if, if, if you got a dad a biological dad breastfeeding a kid tell me that kid's gonna end up well-adjusted, healthy, you know, same opportunities mentally as their no. peers. But no. that's, that's the PSYOP, you know. Well, it's actually insane that actual NHS is going along. That's a medical institution going along with something so absurd. Now you wonder why people don't like us. Look, I worked hard to get into the world. You know that. I mean, not that you haven't either. We we yeah. worked hard to, to transition, to look like a woman, to look like a man, to walk the world that way. And that you, you need to understand, people out there who are watching this need to understand, this is true transsexualism right here. We don't want to hate you. We don't want you to hate us. We want to walk with you, sit at the table with you, do everything thing that actual people do so when when both i i think i can speak for blair at this point want see a trans woman breastfeeding that is so absurd and beyond that means you don't care about the baby that's what that means that is narcissism personified that is my own validation as trans or a woman or whatever is ahead of the needs of a new life on this planet so. i mean that is just that, but that also, you know, is very indicative of where we are in the world too. Yeah, you yeah. know, is this, this I, my needs before anyone else's sort of needs. And that's right. When we get when you get to the point that children's needs are not in front of adults' needs, it's yeah, like yeah. that historically is just a really bad sign. You know, I mean, societies that come to that point, which societies do come to that point, that that's crumbling time. That's like. That's oh, right. it's over. You know, all all sensibility is gone. All common sense, all rationality, <laughs> all morals. What? So what? what we either turn this, we turn it around, or it's or it's over. In my opinion, we turn it around, or it's over. Yeah, we're on a slippery slope right now. We are actually on a slippery slope. And when you start saying stuff like this and you start saying things, this is normal. And you start saying like men get, you know, men get periods and that trans women are getting periods and that all of these things are happening that are so ups uh, clearly a lie. I mean, it's clearly a lie. And then people say, no, it's not. This is actually real. So they're gaslighting the heck out of us and the world. And I'm telling you, as a 30 plus year transition person, I've never, ever, Blair, felt so much hate towards trans people ever in my whole life. That says a lot. Oh, for sure. It, it's really interesting because the reason I know that there's never been more hate is because I've also never felt more love 
from individuals, like people, the way I get, you know, in social settings or when I make new friends or, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm around people here in Texas, it's like the breath and sigh of relief mentally that they have when they talk to me yeah. is so extreme and noticeable that that's how I know that they are walking around with like a lot of like judgment and like negative yeah. feelings. Yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't feel good, right? Like I think people love finding an opportunity to release some of the stored and pent up like aggression they have towards trans people. Yes. And they very much appreciate when they come across someone who isn't on board with that stuff. And, you know, so that's how I actually know. It's an interesting way to judge it, but that's what it is yeah. because earlier in my life, it was just kind of like, it really was neutral. It's like, I'm really an individual and people took me as is. Now I get so much love like from people in real life that I'm like, oh, that means they have a lot of hate to begin with, you know? Well, so, what it means to me is that they see you as an actual real trans person who yeah. struggled to get where you are, that you make a huge effort clearly to look like a woman. And that's what I want the world to see. This is true transsexualism. It's dysphoria. We want everyone to see us as men and women. We don't want you to, to be a bearded woman walking in the woman's room and wonder why you're going to get your ass kicked when you walk into the woman's room because you are. <laughs> and you deserve, I won't say someone deserves violence. Okay? Well, like, you, you know, we're saying that. However, yeah, I will say yeah. You deserve yeah. the negativity that you receive if you just shove your way into a woman's space as a That's whole right. ass man like that. Because for me, this is this is how I know that what's happening with the trans women mm -hmm. is not normal in terms of normal transsexualism. Oxymoron, but y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, none of it's normal, but um, is that for me, being a decade into transition, being a 30-year-old transsexual woman, my empathy, my understanding, and my camaraderie with women has Thank only you. increased. I feel like every year it's doubled. Every year it's doubled. So the fact that I don't see that in others, and I see more aggression towards women, and I see less respect for them sort of having boundaries against certain things, that's how I know that's not right. Because for me, I actually do get perceived as a woman on the street, which means I am actually you know, on the receiving end of things like misogyny, of things like, like, you know, sexual aggression from men that makes me feel a certain way. And until you experience it, you don't know how degrading and horrible it is. So that's how I know they're not really experiencing it. So there's, you, you have to live it to some extent to have that empathy. And, you know, and that's still, even with me as a trans woman, I'm always also quick to say, you know, I walk through the world and I receive a lot of, you know, sexual aggression from men that makes me feel sometimes I want to cry about it. It's so ugly. Mm -hmm. And I still do, am not vulnerable in the same way of having, you know, a uterus and the possibility of getting pregnant if something happens to me because I'm a man forcing himself on me. So it's still, you know, if you don't have respect for, for women, you are not a real trans woman in my, in my opinion. I would never, I don't know. So, sometimes I feel like the older I get, the more I'm like, I only like women, not sexual. Like, I don't really like men anymore the older I get. I'm like, it's just so much nastiness. And it's so much yeah. like, it's a lot, you know, not to get on a man bashing spree, which I could do, but. Well, you're not, you're not a man hater at all. There's no, 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 no. I completely yeah. get what you're saying. Just and respect it means women. That's all. Just respect women. That is gold. This is gold. And what I want the world to see, that is actually the way you walk the world as a trans woman. Because all my trans woman friends are like you, Blair. They all are look like women. They all try to make themselves. They don't want to get involved in this nonsense. I'm sure you have a lot of those same yeah. trans women. They're disgusted by these new trans women. And I always say it, and I don't care what anybody thinks about me. You know that. They're cross-dressers. They're not trans mm -hmm. women. They're actual cross-dressers, or they have a fetish for being a woman. You can see it, because real trans women would never say the things that are coming out of these people's mouths, ever. Yeah, if you're really waking up every day, and like, I don't wake up as something else and then become Blair. You know, that's a drag right. I wake up as Blair every day, <laughs> whether my hair is up in a bun and I'm going to the yes. gas station, or whether I'm, you know, on camera, full hair and makeup Blair. Like, that's Yes. So for me, that's how I feel like a lot of them probably live their life as Daryl and then have like a Twitter account where they put on a purple wig and they're like, I'm Cassandra. You that's right. I mean? like, that's right. So that's not fair. You have, of course, you wouldn't have that empathy for the lived experience of women because you're experiencing none of it. Because when you're at the gas station, you're Daryl. But when you're on Twitter saying that Blair White's a Nazi, you're Cassandra. 
There you go. And that's the point I'm trying to make. They're not ready to actually live the whole true life of a transsexual. They're just using it to when they can use it, when they can when they can say it, and then going home and becoming a man again or whatever they're doing. And I'm telling you, every trans woman I know would never have a beard. They would never have a beard. That is so dysphoric for all the, I mean, can you, what is that? How does that make you feel when you the see facial that? Hair. The facial hair is the first thing I did. And I had probably four hairs. That's and I was right. like, I'm going to laser. And before I even do hormones, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to laser. And I had four hairs left. That's right. That's, That's how right. much that that is like the the bare minimum. That's right. You know, sort of thing. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not all about looks. I'm very big on, you know, it's a lot about energy as well. You know, like wh when I'm around you, Buck, it's like I feel, you know, a paternal... Thank you know, you. masculine, like I'm safe in his presence because this is a man yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. And, you know, I think that, from, you know, from what I've heard and from what people tell about me, you know, my friends are constantly telling me, I always forget you're even trans because <laughs> totally. energetically it doesn't even yeah. feel that way. So mm -hmm. for me, your energy really, it should align with who you say that you are, and it shouldn't even be a choice to get that energy to align. It should just naturally do that. And if it's not naturally aligning, that that means something about you is in misalignment and that maybe this trans thing isn't for you. If you are a brute and you are busting down women's bathroom doors and then uploading on TikTok with a beard talking about you uh -huh. can't do shit about it, something's not in alignment here. And maybe you're not picking up on that, but clearly other people are. So maybe question why your soul and your spirit are not quite hitting the same. Right on. That is excellent and beautiful. And and on so it's not saying nasty things. It's saying reality because they are angry. They're coming to it so angry. I, I to me, it feels like they hate women. They hate women, but they want to yeah. be a woman. It's just so the whole thing is so twisted. And that's why me. they hate us. That's why they hate us because that's when right. they see you, Buck, they see a man. When they yeah. see me, they see a woman, and so they hate that because. They hate me. Like, that's why they call me a turf. as if that makes yep. any sense, right? Like I'm a trans exclusionary radical feminist, even though I am trans and not a feminist. So how can I be radical in an ideology I'm not even subscribed to? And I'm trying like, but, but they really view it that way because they put us in the same bucket because that's right. They see it too, you know, so that's they do right. hate women. They're, they're anti well, They hate, they hate women. Um, I want to grab a couple of these chats here. Oh, let's uh, do it. I have to take off my glasses because I'm getting so old and go, I have to go get my eyes checked. But let me see. I think we had some questions. Well, I'll just put a couple. I'll put up these. Thanks for all. Can you can you see that, Blair? I can. What does it say? Thanks for all these Thanks amazing. Thanks for all the amazing work you both do. So glad I can call Buck a friend too. Thank you for the opportunity. Bye, oh, sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vicky. Thank you. And then what does this one say? Can you read it? I'm a gay boy from Poland, and I want to say that despite being a left-wing politics supporter, your channel gave me so much perspective, Blair. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you, Ash. Ash, I'm sorry. Good Ash, luck. Ash, Ash, <laughs> oh, Ash, good luck, Blair. <laughs> Ash, <you're talking>. Sorry. <laughs> That's me <laughs> pronouncing that. <laughs> Mia, Mia B. Y'all, please reach out to me. I used to be Willow. I transitioned at 14. I don't believe in how things are going now. I couldn't get on hormones till 18. Joe Rogan saw me on mugs. What's that? I'm the only TST. You transitioned at 14. See? Oh, gosh. I hope you're okay, friend. I really do. And thanks for the super chat sticker. And here we go. Uh, oh, she, it's the same person. Yeah. What does she say? Google Willow Anarchy. I was one of the toughest transitioners in the community. Really coerced me into sex work, and I don't agree with the current climates. Oh, wow. Well, well thank you, Mia. I, I will totally reach out to you. Okay. So... Uh, look up Jeff Younger and how the state of Texas backed his ex-wife yeah. who forcibly truned his son. What? Do you know that story? Yeah, that was oh. um, one of the first cases um, out here in Texas. It was a dad who there was a divorce that happened and the dad didn't want the kids to be kid to be trans. The mom went to California. So that was really the landmark beginning okay. of the sanctuary state stuff. So I I mean, it's very sad. Very sad. It's sick that a parent would do that. Thank you for that, my, my friend. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Uh, wow, two trans icons, and I get to see them live. Oh, thank you. Thanks to you, too, for bringing such important viewpoints and experience and talking about it. Oh, thank you, the thank SP you. Chief, Chief. Thank you so so much. My, is it Chief or, Ch or Chef? <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't graduate high school. I love saying that. <laughs> I, went, I went home. I was on homeschool. So <laughs> better than going to actual school and not graduating. Don't let anyone else write your story. Bravo, Blair. Yeah, because Blair is brilliant. I fully agree. The current narrative around the the suit, oh yeah, is so irresponsible. It is. Can you believe it they're is. even saying that, Blair? It what? is that because here's the other thing. The idea that that is just part of our stories and we have to just deal with that. Even as bad as, you know, things have been for me in my life at certain times, I've never had a single, you know, one of those ideations yeah. ever in my life. Yeah. So that just goes to show you that's not inherently part of the trans story that we struggle with wanting to end things like that. I've never had that. And I've wow. been through the Wow. Wow. Thank you for saying that. That's huge. You know, I struggled as a young person back in the day and I did do some things that put me into a hospital, but that's not everybody's story. And I'll be honest with you, Blair, I struggled as a young person with my sexuality. I did not struggle with my gender at all. It was all about my sexuality. And that's what I keep telling people. It wasn't until later on that I realized I'm actually a dude. I'm not a, a butch chick. But it was literally my sexuality that put me in spaces having to be in a psychiatric hospital and all that. Because remember back in the 70s and the 80s, we didn't talk about being gay yeah. at all. It was very I difficult. I remember that actually a bit because I remember back when I was growing up as a teenager, you know, I – obviously have not transitioned yet. And so the sort of one plus one equals two is that I'm a male who should be, you know, maybe dating or seeking out other, you know, gay males. Mm -hmm. And that never felt right. And it never felt right for them either. Like gay guys were, I've, I've never had gay men mm -hmm. presume me to be interested even when I was a boy. So um, I was always like, why is that? You know, what's going on? So mm -hmm. it ended up being the trans thing, which made it make sense, but I relate to that. Well, no. Yeah, it makes sense. You're actual, you're a female, you have female energy. Like you're, so gay men aren't going to necessarily be interest, interested in that at yeah. all. I can completely under, understand that. Thanks you guys for the, for the super chats. I totally appreciate you all so much. It means a lot. Uh, thank you, Buck and Blair. I'm an L. I was kicked. Oh, okay. You are Les <laughs> and kicked out of my community, but I agree. Believe the same things you two lovely souls do. I know you probably get a ton of hate, but I love you for speaking up. Do you get a ton of hate, Blair? Of course, always have. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, you know, the thing is, like, not to make it sound, you know, some type of way, but even if people take it the wrong way, whatever, if you're ahead of your time, that's what happens. No person yep. who's ahead of their time gets treated well, you know, and that's right. That's it right. is what it is. That's right. I, you know, that's, that's also, don't you believe on some level it helped you become the person you are, the sort of oh, yeah. pushback? Yeah. Oh yeah. I had to have it just like in school. I yeah. had to be bullied. I had to go through everything I went through, yeah. you know, that's everything right. about my life makes sense of why it happened and it doesn't affect me anymore. Really? No. Also, cause you're taking care of your mental health, yeah. you know, you no. Know, and that, that's, that's, I think the next level of your growth, you're always growing. And that says to me, whatever else, anybody, it doesn't really matter. That's why I think what Blair, for me, what I see in Blair is like, is showing that don't let all of those people pull you down. You are full on and responsible for your own life and your own path. And all those people biting at your ankles, <laughs> where are they today? Right? They're still biting at somebody else's ankles on some level. I don't they see look, them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they look for somebody else because you were just like not paying attention. <laughs> it's so brilliant. Uh, thanks so much, Al. Love you all. The Butch loves you both. All right. I love butches, man. Oh, I miss yeah. all the butches. And you, you read this one. Oh, Blair, in your therapy video, you mentioned recently learning you're autistic. How's that experience? How was that experience for you? You don't have to answer if not comfy. I'm totally comfy with it because um, I think that it makes sense. And I think that people who, you know, have watched me throughout the years, it's not as if that's probably a super shocking thing. The way my brain operates, you know, I'm, I'm on the lower end, right? I'm not a high support need. I know some people you know, when you get to like nonverbal autism, you get to people who really struggle with communication. I'm a great communicator. Um, but I I have, you know, the way my brain works is on the spectrum a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just that perfect amount that has really helped me actually, and really allowed me to see certain things in a way that has benefited me. Um, so I'm not mad at it at all. You know, I think that uh, it just is what it is. I don't see it as a negative thing. I think that when you look at autistic people, I mean, 
they're some of the best people because it's not as if they're the ones out there committing crimes or not the mm-hmm. ones out there being violent. They're the ones that, you know, have some issues with, with, you know, communication and with being, you know, in groups of people and fitting yeah. in a society, you know, it, anytime you're like an, a big outcast, which I mean, in a lot of ways I am black sheep, you know, that kind of screams a little bit of autism, right? Can't fit yeah. in. Um, so Talk I'm cool with it. So, so I want to just, we're going to leave here because we took a lot of Blair's time today. And I thank you so much for being here, Blair. It means the world to me. But the one thing I want to ask here before we go, and I'm sorry I didn't get to all the, the chats, but thank you so much, everybody, for sending that. It means a lot to me and Blair that you really, really support us and see what yeah. we're doing as super important. But that being said, this is one question I wanted to ask. And if it's too personal, but you seem to be okay, I think you posted. You and your mom. I saw a post with you and your mom, and I actually cried. Oh. I did because I was so, like, I just love that. That's the most important thing to me as an elder in this community is to watch people who have been separated from their family because of maybe transitioning or things that were going on. And to finally find that peace and that space to reconnect to your mom. Yeah. It's it was so beautiful. It was a lot. Um, my mom, the trans thing has never been a problem for her. She was always actually the only person when I was younger and people didn't really understand why I was so feminine yeah. or whatever. She was always my defender and understood that like, it's not as if it's his choice talking about me as a kid. Right. So um, it was, it was other stuff, you know, there, sure. there was a lot of just issues in the home, addiction issues, you know, sure. things going on with the adults in the home. And, you know, I held a grudge for a long time and, mm-hmm. I held a grudge about things that weren't actually necessarily her fault because sometimes you need time to figure out why things went down the way they did as a kid. Um, And so part of me understanding, you know, what happened to me as a kid through those repressed memories, it gave me empathy for my mom because I started understanding that maybe certain things happened to her as well. Maybe those same exact things. And that can sometimes make you, make it harder to protect other people, even your kids from it happening to them because it happens to you. And basically I just understood that like, all I have is, you know, my mom, you know, it's, it's my mom and it's time to grow up, let bygones be bygones, forgive and hope she can forgive me and make it all right again. So I had a trip out to San Francisco meeting up with her because she lives up North in California and you know it it was just like so cool because i got to catch her up on what my life is like now you know it was really wild for her to like walk around with me and like fans were coming up and so she got to like experience like what my fans are like which my fans are also lovely she was like these are what your fans are like they're so cool you know um so it was cool to sort of catch her up to pace with where i'm at in life now and i suggest that anyone if you can fix things with people in your family do it you know it's not always fixable but if it is I say do it. Oh, wow. Powerful. Because family is everything to me. I think you know that. I'm huge on family. And that's one of the things I see in this new sort of indoctrinated nation of the community is get away from your family. They don't love you. Get away. I'm like, what? That has got to be the most weird, creepy thing to ever say to a child. They need their family, especially when they're going through something like that. That's how you know it's indoctrination, you know? That's you know, right. You, that's Damn. where you're your most vulnerable is, is isolated, and they know isolated. that. Isolated. They know that. So, well, Blair, you're a beautiful human being, and I'm so blessed to have you in my life, and I think the world is a better place with you in it, and keep Likewise. growing and keep becoming this badass person that you are. And um, with that, everybody, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate all of you so much. I appreciate all of you being here and really giving Blair a lot of love. I watched, I saw as much as I could see in the chat. So thank you. And uh, you have anything you'd like to say, Blair, before we head out? Um, Just that I love you. And I'm so glad that you're in my life and that I really appreciate everyone, you know, being supportive of Buck as well. You know, I always say, it's either you support Buck if you support me or you don't support me. You know, it, 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 we're a little package deal, right? That's so, right. We thank are. Thank you guys for everything. And thanks for having me, Buck. Oh, uh, you're sweet. I'll, I'll talk to you later. I'll give you a little text. For sure. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Have an awesome day. See you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Have a great day.